we already live? Yeah, it's live. You should be live. Yep. Oh, You're live. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hdih wa na'udhu billahi min shiruri anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Amma ba'd rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli rabbi zidni ilma. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. We begin with the praise and the glory of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah for his infinite mercy and blessings. We ask Allah for his guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in this month of Ramadan. We are here today with our Quran study circle, inshallah. Today we will be covering uh, several surahs. So we will be doing recitation of the Quran and the translation. Since this is the month of Ramadan, so we want to utilize our time in a way that we are able to focus more on tilawa and recitation because tilawa and recitation has great ajr and great reward especially in the month of Ramadan and of course translation as well as do, does as well but just listening to the Quran builds spirituality so inshallah we are going to do that and I hope that uh, uh, you are able to listen and benefit from it, inshallah. So the plan, as we discussed with our class and all of the students and participants here today, that we are going to be doing Surah Al-Kahf, the recitation of Surah Al-Kahf, and then we are going to be doing the translation of Surah Al-Kahf and a brief explanation and commentary of Surah Al-Kahf. So uh, let us start. Surah Al-Kahf is... Uh, um, uh, uh, surah, uh, surah number 18 of the Quran It begins in the 15th juz of the Quran And uh, Surah Al-Qahaf can be divided into several sections And Inaya will let us know how many sections the Surah Al-Qahaf have There are 10 sections in Surah Al-Qahaf Excellent uh, Okay, so Inaya, how many sections are we doing today? Two we're doing two sections today. And uh, the way we are going to be doing this, uh, uh, Abdul Rahman will be doing the Tilawa recitation and uh, Inaya will be doing the translation and Mahad and in Mahad and Inaya, Mahad will also be doing the second one. And then inshallah, Arham will give a little bit of explanation and commentary as well, inshallah. So uh, in section number one, Inaya, would you let us know that uh, from uh, which ayah to which ayah? Um, in section one, it is from ayah one to ayah 16. No, six. Ayah six from ayah number one to ayah number six is uh, section no, number. No, it's uh, it's ayah one to ayah twelve, okay. and then um section two is ayah twelve to ayah seventeen. Excellent. Okay, inshallah, that is great. So let us to start uh, section number one is from ayah number one to ayah number 12. We are going through Surah Al-Kahf. The idea is to understand, to recite the Quran properly, the recitation, the translation, and a brief explanation of uh, the Quran and of Surah Al-Kahf, inshallah. So go ahead and Abdul Rahman, we begin with the translation of a uh, recitation of the Quran, read it. Read it nice, read it slow, read it beautifully, and read it with uh, calmness, inshallah, so that we can be mesmerized with the beautiful recitation of the Quran. But, so from, and from, from where to where, uh, uh, Inaya, can you please let us know once again? Ayah 1 to Ayah 12 is section 1. Okay. Ayah 1 to Ayah 12. Go ahead, Abdurrahman. Okay, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر مأسا شديدا من لدن ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما فيهن فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جرزا أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أول فسية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزمين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا Beautiful. Uh, section number one of Surah Al-Kahf is from ayah number one to ayah number twelve. Abdurrahman recited uh, the Quran from Surah Al-Kahf from 1 to 12 in a very beautiful manner. Jazakumullah khair, Abdurrahman. Um, now we will move on to Inaya. Inaya, would you please do the translation of uh, uh, verse by verse, okay? Okay. I want you to do it nice and beautifully and clear and loud, inshallah. Ayah 1. Praise be to Allah who has revealed the book to his servant and made it free from any crookedness. Ayah 2. He has made it straight so that he may warn about the terrible punishment for the unbelievers mm -hmm. from him and give the good news to the believers who do good deeds that they shall have a goodly reward paradise. Ayah 3. They will live forever. Ayah 4. Further, further to warn those who say Allah has begotten a son. They have no knowledge about it, nor did their forefathers. This is a monstrous word that comes from their mouths. They utter nothing but lie. O oh, Muhammad, you probably will kill yourself in the grief over them if they do not if they do not believe in this message, the Quran. We have decked we have decked the earth with all kinds of ornaments to test people and to see which of them do the best deeds. In the end, we shall reduce all that is on it to a barren of wasteland. Do you think that the companions of the cave and of Al-Raqim, this, this may refer inscribed or the mountain in which 
uh, the cave is situated. Where a wonder among our signs. When, when those young men took refuge in the cave, they said, our rub, have mercy on us from yourself and facilitate facilitate for us the right way so we put upon their ears a cover put them in a deep sleep for a number of years in the cave and they awaken awaken them to find out which of the two parties believers and non-believers who are arguing about the fact of a fact about the life after death could best tell the length of their stay. That's uh, it. Excellent. Uh, that is beautiful. Uh, Inaya, so she, Inaya read the translation from ayah number one to ayah number 12 of Surah Al Kahf. Uh, very good. Um, uh, Arham, share with us. Uh, some insight so um from what i remember if every friday you read surah bakara surah kaf uh, surah kaf sorry yes surah kaf then um then you get protection from the jal mm -hmm. and uh, one thing that i wanted to, that i noticed was that like um there was an ayah of, that I was saying to Prophet Muhammad says, don't kill yourself over grief, over their belief. From what I remember, this uh, ayah was revealed after a long period of time when there was no revelation. And that I think it's kind of, it's like beautiful, subhanAllah. Like, read the ayah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, read the ayah. That like, do not kill yourself in grief over them. Prophet Muhammad um, was um, he was such a compassionate person that he that Allah SWT is saying don't kill yourself when people say don't kill yourself that's not something light they're talking about the grief that they're experiencing has to be heavy and in this case he's grieving over the fact that not everyone will go to Jannah and it just shows you the beauty of Prophet Muhammad how he's such a good person and in this way we should emulate him Absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, ayah number six that you're referring to, is beautiful in a way that, you know, it's, uh, it's reminding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about his responsibility. And it's also reminding the followers and the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave in the form of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because uh, you know that uh, who is the Prophet of Allah? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is rahmatul lil alameen. He is a mercy to mankind, right? It was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who continuously made dua for us. He supplicated for us. And it is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's also been mentioned in the hadith that it is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, you know, on the day of judgment, when we will be standing, you know, and waiting in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, will be the one who will intercede on behalf of all of us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one that who will, you know, give us water from the house of Kothar that is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we come to know that, you know, through the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, throughout his life, and even like before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was passing away, his concern and worry was, about me and you, about the followers, about the people who will come to follow in Islam and follow in the Quran. Basically, the, the meaning and the message of Islam many, many years after without seeing the Prophet Sallallahu right? You know, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has gone to say that, 
what would be the shan yani the status or you know the stature of people who will believe in me without physically seeing me right it's beautiful and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is referring or is talking about the people who would come many many years such as us right the distance between our time and the time of the prophet ali salatu wasalam is approximately more than 1400 years it's 1400 years right so the prophet ali salatu wasalam we did not see him right but yet we believe in him right we believe in everything that he has taught us we follow and we emulate the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right because subhanallah that's what the prophet ali salatu wasalam said in his hadith that what will be the shan yani the stature of the people who hasn't seen me but yet they believed in me subhanallah it's amazing he was referring to us so the concern of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam throughout his life was that he was worried about his companions he made dua for us he made dua for you he made dua for me he made dua for our children he made dua for our iman he made dua for us to be steadfast in islam so khair uh, this is a very good point that arham you brought up now inshallah let's move on and then we have this surah the name of this surah is al kahf al kahf means uh, a cave the opening or it's called cave the reason why this surah is named al kahf it's because it has the story of the people of cave and what is the story of the people of the cave the story of the people of the cave is that they these were several people Uh, who took refuge in the cave for the protection of their iman and these were youngsters these were youth the these were the people who went inside the cave to seek and and to protect their iman because there was prevalent fitna fitna was so so rampant and so much around us so they wanted to take refuge in that that was beautiful now yes arham go ahead move on what well, what else were you uh, share with us and continue um i didn't have anything else okay uh, mahad why don't you share with us do you have anything that you want to share with us i have nothing to say about natasura okay uh, the no worries then let us go oh well, except Uh, except that not the surah starts with a feel a uh, bit of surah fatiha alhamdulillah yeah, it has starting it starts by yes very good point mahad it starts by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similar to that of surah al fatiha surah al fatiha also starts by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying all praise and thanks be to allah similarly al kahf also starts in the same manner by praising and glorifying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, yeah that's a very good point and uh, uh, one of the fadila or one of the virtues that is mentioned about al kahf is that it is recited on the day of uh, um it is recited on the day of judgment and it serves as a protection <laughs> okay uh, go ahead let's move on to the second part and then continue with the recitation abdur rahman uh, inaya uh, what to cover what what is in the section 2 um Ayah 12 to ayah 17. Okay. Uh, Abdul Rahman, go ahead and do the tilawa. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Thumma ba'athnahum lina'alam ayyul hazbayn ahsani ma labitu amada. نحن نقص عليك نباهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وجزناهم هدى وربطنا على قلوبهم إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إلها لقد قلنا إذا شططا هؤلاء قومنا اتخذوا من دونه آلهة 
لولا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا وإذا اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأووا إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم من فقام وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تجاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة من ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا Zakla Khair, Abdurrahman, beautiful recitation. Uh, Inaya, would you read to us the translation from ayah number 16? No, uh, from ayah number 13 to ayah number 17. Now we tell their real story. They were young men who believed in their Rabb, and we increased them in guidance. We put courage in their hearts when they stood up and declared, Our rub is the rub of the heavens and the earth. We shall never call upon any other except him. For if we do, we shall, we shall be utterly, utterly. In, these, go ahead. In disbelief. These people of ours have taken for worship other gods beside him. If they are right, why do they not bring forth any convincing proof of their divin divinity? Who is more wicked than the one who in invents a lie about Allah? The young men said to, to one another, Now that now that now that you have withdrawn from them and denounced the, those de, 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 deities whom they worship beside Allah, let us take refuge in the cave. Your rub will extend you his mercy and provide you a means of safety. If you could look at them in the, in the cave, it would appear to you th that the, risen, the rising sun declines to the right from their cave and as it sets passing from the left while they lay in an, in an open space in between. This is, this is from... This is from the signs of Allah. He whom, he whom Allah guides is rightly guided, but he whom he lets go astray. You will find no guardian to, to lead him to the right way. Very good. Uh, excellent. Alhamdulillah. I think that uh, it would be better if we do the, the translation and the tafsir over the, uh, uh, on, the comp on the screen. Uh -oh. And then that way we can have, uh, um, uh, we, we can show the, the recitation and the translation on the tafsir and we can read it from that. What do you... Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think about that? That's a good mm. idea. Yes, I agree with that idea. Do you agree with that? Maybe we can do that from next time. Um, uh, I guess, uh, and then inshallah, that way that we can put up the translation and we can, uh, we can put up the, uh, what is a good, uh, good website that has a good tr translation? Um, Tanzil.net has like, 
a lot of translations you can go for. If you want it, Aya by Aya, Quran.com is another uh, is another good source. Does it also have uh, Does it also have the Arabic as well? The translation, translation. Yeah. It has the translation right underneath the Arabic, Quran.com. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, let me just open that up, and then I will um, I will share that, uh, and then we will that way the people who are watching it's uh, it's easy for us. So, are we gonna do more than two sections today? Uh, yes, we will probably end up doing more than two sections, inshallah. Uh, Quran.com is very good. Somebody said Quran.com is very good. So let's, uh, uh, I'm glad that um, people are communicating with us and letting us know so that we can utilize it better. Let's see if it pulls up. Bye -bye. Okay. Uh, in any case, I am not able to. Uh... Okay, <clears throat> this is excellent. Uh, okay, I have that open, and uh, let me just share the screen over here. Um, and that way, uh, we will be able to see the screen and what we are reciting here. <laughs> Are you guys able to see it now? There you go. Alhamdulillah. So much better. So and... bright. Okay. Um, very good. So up until now, we've covered... Um, the first section. And then we were on the second section, which we started from ayah number uh, which I used 13 okay so go ahead and uh, now Mahad can uh, Mahad can uh, do the recitation for uh, the translation Mahad would you like to do the translation or recitation what would you like to do translation okay so Abdul Rahman recited the verse uh, to, together from ayah number 13 to 16 Inaya can do the Arabic recitation now, and uh, uh, Mahat can do the translation. I don't have a Quran. No worries, I'll do it. Okay, so um, verse number thirteen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم the... Mahad, you want to do the translation of this ayah? Uh, you're muted. Their story and truth. Can you start again? Because you were muted. It is we who relate to you, O Muhammad. In their story and truth, indeed, they were youths who believed in their Lord, and we increased them in guidance. Good. Now I think it's more, uh, it's more of a better uh, explanation for us, and now we can expound more on this. And Arham, I want you to just raise your hand or speak when you have a point to share. Good. Now let's okay, go. I have something to share about that. Go ahead. So uh, previously we were talking about like how this is all being told to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at a time when there wasn't that much care. And there's like um, some key points that we can take from this. So first of all, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is attributing their guidance to him, which is something we should remember and that guidance is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Like he was telling Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can't control if other people are in guidance or not, only that belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that uh, um, it doesn't matter what their age was because these were like youths as the Quran said. Now what age it says exactly, that doesn't matter. The point is that like we can learn from like people young and old, you know, there's, 
a source of anybody can be a source of guidance from any age. An excellent point uh, uh, you made. A uh, lot of times we tend to relate uh, knowledge, wisdom, uh, understanding to an old age, to an elderly, not to say that that is not true. That is true in a way because the older you have, you are far more experienced. You have seen and lived life for most of your life and or for more than younger people. Therefore, it is. it just makes sense that you would be or that one would be uh, more knowledgeable or experienced about life. But in any case, that's not... Uh, the a, a, a stepping stone or something that's set in concrete that it just because you're older you know more or you are more experienced or you're more wise sometimes a younger person by way of ibadah by way of studying by way of research by way of traveling or simply by way of guidance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be far more knowledgeable than many elderly right so when it comes to seeking knowledge, when it comes to seeking wisdom, when it comes to seeking hidayah, we shouldn't shy away and we should not think that just because someone is younger than me, you know, maybe it is your children who can teach you something, right? Sometimes a teacher learns from a student as well, right? And sometimes you may sit in a class and a student might teach you something that it may be something new for the, for the teacher, right? So the point is that uh, there is no age when it comes to seeking knowledge or when it comes to learning knowledge, right? It comes with merit. It comes with a responsibility. It comes with that who has been bestowed guidance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A very good point. So then we went on to ayah number 14. Mahad, you can do the... Uh, 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 Ar Abdul Rahman, go ahead and do the uh, Arabic and then Mahad will do the translation. From which ayah to which? Ayah number 14. وَرَبَطَنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنْ نَدَعُوَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِلَهَا لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَا شَهْطَطَطَ Uh, go ahead, Mahad, do the translation, please. And we made a firm from you know, their hearts when Aldea stood up and said, Our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Never will we invoke in him any deity. We would have uh, certainly spoken then an excessive trans um, transgression. Good. Uh, Arham, Inaya, would you like to add on to any point? Um, just a simple one that like um, we can learn, we can remember this from this ayah that like it doesn't matter what others around us are doing as long as we're on the, the path of Islam. Good point. Inaya? They didn't back off because other people were believing in something else. They, they had a lot of confidence and they knew what they had to do so they yeah they stood firm good point uh no it's a really good point you brought up and i think this kind of relates to us the idea is when we study the quran when we read the translation you know and the arabic of the quran we need to relate it to our life so one of the lessons that we learned from here is they didn't just completely go with the flow right uh, and we made وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَالُوا And we made firm their hearts when they stood up and said رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ Basically, the point that both of you made is a very important point that they did not go with what everybody else is doing with what's common with what's become a custom or a norm of the society with what, with what the majority is doing, right? Like for instance, we live in a society everybody is... Uh, Say, when you go to school, everybody's doing a certain things, which is bad. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean that you should do it, right? Just because everybody is following a specific trend, does that mean that you're supposed to do it? Just because everybody's following 
a specific style in terms of clothing or in terms of carrying yourself or in terms of, uh, uh, you know, putting stuff on your body or carrying yourself. Does that mean that we're supposed to do it? No, we're not supposed to do it. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran that uh, you know, being firm and having istiqama in whatever you do. Rabbuna, Rabbu Samawati. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here praises this quality of theirs. And this quality is that Allah Azza wa Jal made firm their heart. So do not let the flow or the norm or the society that is going towards the wrong direction hinder you affect you or change you from your course and that course is that our rub is allah he is the rub of the heavens and the earth right right and we do not associate anyone with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right we would have certainly spoken then an excessive transgression very good Let's move on to the next ayah, ayah number 15 of Surah Al-Kahf. Abdurrahman, go ahead and do the translation, uh, the recitation, and uh, Inaya will do the translation now. <laughs> The translation, Inaya. The young men said to one another, Now that you have with, withdrawn from them and denounced, denounced those whom they worship besides Allah, let us take refuge in the cave. Your Rub will extend you to his mercy and provide which, you. Which ayah are you reading the translation of? Ayah 15. Oh, 15. Uh, okay. Can you do it again? Because I have something else. Why don't you read from the screen? Can you see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, so read from the screen right here. These our people have taken besides him deities. De why deities? Deities. deities. Why deities do they? Basically, deities basically means gods or idols or things that you worship or you pray to. Why do they not bring for worship of? They a clear uh, them a clear uh, authority, and who is more unjust than one who invents about a law a lie? Good, very good. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on to the next ayah. Allah basically in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about the people who have associated partners, idols, and gods with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, basically all of those people who do that are committing a grave sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is an injustice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our religion, this is also known as shirk, right? associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of nothing. They have no knowledge. They don't know whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has partners. Them doing that is an injustice act that they are doing against their God. SubhanAllah. Go ahead. Uh, let's move on to the next ayah. Abdurrahman. Ayah number 16. Recitation. Okay. Mahad, can you read the translation, please? 
the youth said to one another, and when you have withdrawn from them and that which they worship other than Allah, retreat to the cave. Your Lord will spread out for you of his mercy and will prepare for you from your affair facility. Good. Go ahead, uh, Inaya, recite the ayah num next ayah number 17 in Arabic. From the screen, you can recite. Inaya, can you hear me? Okay, I think there is a, a lag. Go ahead, Abdurrahman, you can recite. <laughs> Good. Uh, okay, Arham, this you can do the translation, please. And you have been present. You would see the sun when it rose, inclining away from their cave on the right, when, and when it was set, passing away from them on the left, while they were laying within an open space thereof. That was from the signs signs of Allah. He whom Allah guides is the right, rightly guided. But he who, whom he leaves astray, never will you find him a pro protecting God. Good. Uh, very good point. And this concludes our section number two, Inaya, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, very beautiful. Uh, inshallah, we will stop over here and then we will add some points. Uh, Arham and Mahad, and do you guys have any points to share uh, regarding uh, this ayah or the previous ayahs that we've covered? Uh, just remember to recite this uh, uh, recite this surah every Friday for protection. Very good point. Uh, yes, inshallah, we, we will try to remember. And this is a good reminder for all of us uh, that uh, we should recite this surah. And uh, we should also read the translation and the commentary of this surah as well. And inshallah, slowly, slowly, alhamdulillah, up till today, we've covered from uh, 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 up to ayah number 17. And uh, up till now, the, some of the points and the themes that we've covered um, is that, uh, you know, everything begins with the praise and the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately moving forward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, consoles the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you will end up harming yourself because of what people, because of these people and because they're not disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it immediately goes into the people of the youth who took refuge in a cave. And the reason why they took refuge in a cave it's because of the fitna or because of the evil that was widespread. And one of the lessons out of the many things that we've, we've, that we've covered or we've talked about is that during the time of excessive evil and fitna or bad that's going on around us, one of the best thing that you can do is when things really get out of control is to take refuge, uh, you know, in a place of isolation or in a place other than uh, uh, where there is fitna because when you have nothing in control and when you cannot do nothing and you are in minority, then the best way for you to is just go and isolate your yourself and do your ibadah and protect your iman. That's one of the lessons that we find from the story of Ashab al-Kahf or Surat al-Kahf as well. And it's interesting and amazing that how we find ourselves in a situation like this, we're all in quarantine, we're in isolation. One of the lessons that we can also, that, that relates to our time is that we are, you know, in an isolation that people during the time of history or even as for the Quran, 
went into seclusion. They went into isolation for the purpose of preserving their iman, for the purpose of preserving their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So actually there's nothing wrong with that, right? In order to, you know, protect something, in order to protect. So what is it when you have something that's very valuable, you know, when you when you really value something, it has a great meaning to you. What do you do? You hide it, right? You keep it away from everybody's eyes because the more people will look at it, more people would want it, right? They would want to hold it. They want to gra- gra- get a hold of it, right? So similarly, when you find yourself in a situation where everybody is falling into the ditch, when everybody is turning away from their principles and values, when Iman, Quran, and the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah is losing value in the sight of people, then the best thing for you to do is to just kind of, you know, uh, separate and isolate yourself. And that separation and isolation is not because you are belittling or you are looking down or you don't want to be part of the society. But the purpose is that because you are not able to control anything and you are not in control and you fear that if you continue to live in that environment you will also end up losing your iman and your faith right so that's why in certain situations like that it is permissible and it is okay and that's what we find from this beautiful story of ashab al-kahf inshallah we will continue reading from ayah number 18 moving forward inshallah and as we come across the different lessons in surah al-kahf and specifically from the story of the people of kahf inshallah we will narrate that now did i miss anything mahad abdurrahman arham inaya if i missed anything Anything, let me know inshallah and then uh, we will we can cover that and then we'll conclude no all right then jazakumullah khair we will end our class over here inshallah we will be back next wednesday at 6 p.m uh covering surah al-kahf inshallah uh the recitation translation and uh, inshallah a brief uh, summary of both jazakumullah khair uh, I will somehow